So we're going to have a look here at how to record a macro and add a button in Excel. I'm using Excel 2007, so if this first stage isn't exactly the same in your version of Excel, then you can always look in the help or search online. So we're going to be using the Developer tab, and the Developer tab doesn't appear by default, but it's quite easy to switch on, certainly in this version of Excel. We just need to go to the button at the top left, go to Excel Options, and then in the Popular section, there's a checkbox for Show Developer tab in the ribbon. And by default, it's unticked, but you just need to make sure that it's ticked, and the tab will appear. So if we have a look in the Developer tab, it gives us options uh, for recording macros and also for adding form controls such as buttons. So at the top left here, we've got a button to record a macro, and once we click that, it records the steps we take. So we just need to click that button, do what we want our macro to do, and then uh, click stop. So I'll click that. It starts um, recording, but it asks us first what we want to call our macro. So I'm going to call it next customer because it's going to prepare the spreadsheet ready for the next customer to come along. And uh, notice I haven't used a space in the name, so I've used an underscore, but you could just use a capital letter or just run it together as one word. It's just so that you recognize what the macro does. And when I click OK, it starts recording the steps that I take but it doesn't record the amount of time between them so it doesn't matter that I'm talking and not doing it straight away there won't be a delay when I run it back it uh, removes the gaps between the steps and just does them as quickly as possible so notice that the button at the top has changed now from record macro to stop recording so all I need to do is do what I want my macro to do so I'm going to delete um, the number of liters delete the amount tendered also think about where we're going to go next, so probably the next thing will be to enter a number of litres for the next customer, so I'll position the cursor up there ready for that. And then I think we're done, so we just need to go up here and stop recording. So now if I click the macros button, that shows us all the available macros, we can see that my next customer but, uh, macro is there, and I can click the run button and it will run that macro for me, but if I do that, that's not a, a great uh, benefit over just deleting those uh, numbers myself. So a better solution is to put a button onto the spreadsheet to run that macro for me. So uh, using the button here that looks like a toolbox that says insert underneath, I can uh, click on there and it shows me all the form controls that I can add to the spreadsheet. And the top left one is the one we want, which is the, the button button, as it were. So if I click on there, I can then draw on where I want my button to go. And as soon as I let go of the mouse, it asks me what I want that button to do. So I can either record a new macro uh, from here, or I can select the one that I've already recorded. Click OK. I can also change the text on that button by highlighting. So while the, um, the button has that thick border around it, and the handle's on the corner, that's in a sort of edit mode. And I can highlight it and change the text, and I can also resize and reposition that button. If I want to come back um, to this uh, state. Um, after I've been using the button, I can click the right mouse button. So if I click on the background now, it turns it into a normal button, which will operate when I click it. And if I want to edit it, I just click the right mouse button and I can then move it um, or resize it or change the text or whatever. So let's just check that that works. So I'm going to put in uh, some numbers, um, some amounts of liters and some amount tendered and click the button, and yeah, that's doing what I want. So it's deleting the values, putting the cursor back up to the top, ready for the next uh, customer to come along. So that's recording a macro and adding a button. There's only one um, step uh, left to mention, which is when I come to save that now, what I'll need to do is I'll need to save it as a macro-enabled workbook. So later versions of Excel won't let you save macros in an ordinary workbook. So when you come to save it, you need to check uh, that you've selected this option here, macro-enabled workbook. Well, in fact, it will warn you if, if you haven't. Um, and the process of saving is the same, except the file name has just got an M instead of an X on the end. So it's .xlsm when you come to save it.